So we're here in New York City to release the Sustainable Development Goals Index. It's a new tool we built to help measure how countries are performing on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So let's go check it out. From the first time I heard of the idea back in 2012, I thought it was great. And mainly because I believe in global goals as helping to guide the world to, to get somewhere that we want to go. We said, let's make an index, let's make a dashboard, let's make an impression where countries stand in order to reach these objectives. But the major, the major thing is that we shift from not only prosperity and economy to sustainability, and that we have a universal legitimacy to work on this. So we assess um, 149 countries in terms of these 17 different sustainable development goals. And these goals range from uh, poverty eradication, hunger, obesity, uh, malnutrition, to health, education, global partnership, climate change. So it's a whole array uh, of topics. And these sustainable development goals are about something very, very important. And that is to combine economic, social, and environmental objectives in a in an integrated manner. What does stand out, uh, and I, I think what is still missing in the public discourse a lot, is that economic progress is not everything. How can these numbers be interpreted? What are these numbers telling us? So the time is over, that there is a part of the world doing well and others to follow. We are now entering in a phase that we say, oh wow, everybody has to take these development goals serious. And if we want to go towards sustainability, then we all have to act. No matter what a country's income level or state of development, there's a potential trap. If you're very poor, it's a poverty trap. If you're a middle-income country aspiring to be a high-income country, it's the so-called middle-income trap where you stay stuck in basic industry but not moving to the high-value-added, high-tech industries. And if you're rich, it's uh, it maybe an affluence trap where you go so far, so much excess, so much pollution, so much environmental harm, or so big a gap between rich and poor that you do yourself in even though you've achieved wealth. And I think that every country, therefore, needs to look at the SDGs, and they are a guide in my view. What happens now is that 169 heads of state leaders said these are the goals that we want to achieve. So the legitimacy is historic. The legitimacy is historic. What we hope is that in three years time, also with the help of the comments that we will get, that we can establish something that is a kind of a standard so that it can be an instrument not only for governments but also for academics, for business, for civil society, and for other actors who want to push in that direction of sustainability. Anyone who's ever managed a project of any kind knows that you lose time at the beginning, not at the end. So with the SDGs as probably the most important global project for the next 15 years, it is important now to keep the momentum going. Once we have developed that instrument as a standard and that it is stable, then we would be very happy. We can make it, but it's going to be a lot of work and it's work well worth undertaking.